No, Dave, no, no. Yes, 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 ladies and gentlemen, it is that time again. Time for us, or in this case, me, to trawl and by me, it means Dave who wrote this. I just read it. That's why I said. There's a teleprompter. I read the teleprompter. That's all I do. I don't research. To trawl the depths of the internet, thank you for doing it on my behalf, Dave. In order to bring you even more tales of the world's most stupid individuals. Individuals who, through their own actions, have done the world a favor by removing themselves from the gene pool. I can't imagine that there are many people still out there to whom the Darwin Awards are unknown. But just in case, here is a description from the official website. The Darwin Awards salute the improvement of the human genome by honoring those who accidentally remove themselves from it in a spectacular manner. I just removed myself from the gene pool. Huh? Snip, snip. Snip, snip. It wasn't spectacular. It was just an unpleasant procedure in a doctor's office. But uh, I have enough children. <laughs> I got a Darwin Award. Woo! Dangly. Hello there. Before we continue, I just want to tell you that this video is sponsored by Keeps. Now, even though my hair journey is over, until Keeps get on their hair cloning technology. Chop, chop, Keeps. Let's go. But look, it doesn't have to be over for you, thanks to our sponsor today, Keeps. Ever wish you could tackle hair loss without leaving your couch? Well, that's where Keeps come in, don't they? Say goodbye to awkward doctor's office visits and pharmacy runs. Just hop online, complete a quick consultation, and voila! You're matched with a licensed medical provider who craft a personalized treatment plan just for you. It's like having a hair specialist in your computer which is cool. And here's the kicker. Keeps delivers your treatments discreetly to your door. No more weird glances at the pharmacy counter. Oh, you think I was that for? Just stop my hair falling out like an old ass man or like that bald guy on the internet. Plus, with flexible delivery options, you're in control. Just pause or cancel your plan anytime. It's clinically proven treatments designed to combat hair loss head on. Whether you're looking to prevent hair loss, stimulate regrowth, or just amp up your hair game, Keeps has got you covered. And with over 5,000 five star reviews, you know you're in good hands. Plus, they've got a whole bunch of other stuff that's useful for your hair thickening shampoo, conditioner, and styling pomade, working together to enhance your results and keep your life looking luscious. So head to keeps.com forward slash Simon or click the link in the description below for a special offer. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Simon. Thank you again to Keeps for sponsoring today's video. And now back to it. Now, before we get down to business, I would like to clarify that you do not have to die to be a recipient of a Darwin Award. You only have to prevent it yourself from continuing your line. Obviously, dying is the most effective way to do this, but accidentally shooting your dick off in a quick draw contest will also do so as well. To be clear, I don't know whether or not this clarification will be relevant, as I have not yet decided on all of the entries that will be included. However, I got some serious shit in the comment section on the last one of these I wrote because people were claiming that you could not win unless you were dead. <coughs> Those people are liars. It's just about removing yourself from the gene pool. And I know, like, Darwin Awards isn't, like, some official thing. It's just people who, like, die um, or, like, shoot their <laughs> off. <laughs> But you can shoot your c off and not die, and that's still. I, could you reproduce without a? C can they extract your sperm from your balls, or like through? Because the sperm is in the balls, so could they use like a needle to whip out your sperm, and then do things with it if you did not have a? The questions that we all wonder. Furthermore, as it is, at the time of writing at least, only April 2024, there are currently no examples on the official website for that. I can't do it. I can't do it. Yo, yo, ChatGPT, new question for you. Let's say that I've shot my d off and a few years go by and my coal has like patched over with just some skin, but good news, my balls completely intact, a-okay, could have a baby if only I had a penis. Could a doctor theoretically go into my balls? How are you going in? Testicles. I mean, not literally, I don't want the doctor inside my balls, but go in there with some sort of needle or something, <coughs> extract my sperm and use that on a woman, hopefully consenting, to have my baby. 
<laughs> be wild with ChatGPT. Yep, that's possible. Doctors can indeed retrieve sperm directly from the testicles using a procedure called testicular sperm extraction. TXE. It's even a thing! Oh my god! And I spoke and interrupted it. Wow! Dude, if you've got... Why did it just... It says I said thebusinessprofessor.com. What the f*** is that? <laughs> I am the business professor. That's quite a good domain, actually. At the time of writing, at least, only April 2024, there are currently no examples on the official website for this year. Wait, there's a... Is there an official... I thought this was like an unofficial thing. Uh, there's a website for this? I thought it was just like people on Reddit. And so the entries will be made up from people who fulfill the necessary criteria but have not yet been recognized. With that out of the way, let's crack on. Brandon Lee Bushman. I know the title of this video claims that the entries are all from 2024, but if this were the case, then it would be an exceptionally short episode, and so I've granted myself access to a few months from 2023 as well. That's cheating! Well, let's just call it the last 12 months. Nah, that's not what the title of this video is. So, it's okay. It's okay. I, it was just a little bit of clickbait. Just like a little morsel of clickbait. Due to an administrative error on the part of the Hampshire and Isle of Wight Police Constabulary, I, will be it very briefly, once had a warrant out for my arrest. All right, time. Time out. Time right the hell out. Dave, what did you do? Having once been placed under arrest due to hilarious drunken misunderstanding outside of Weatherspoons in Hull, I was, shall we say, less than keen on repeating the experience, and so I have a little bit of sympathy with Mr. Bushman. Bushman, who appears to have been occupying a derelict house in Minnesota with a number of friends for some reason, probably because he didn't have a house. <laughs> Not just doing it for fun, is he? Also had a warrant out for his arrest. So, when he heard that there were police conducting door-to-door -door searches in the area, he was understandably concerned. Although it would later transpire that the ladies and gentlemen of the law were not looking for him at all. It assumed that they were, though, and according to the friends we mentioned earlier, he fled down into the basement to hide. Once there, <laughs> good friends. <laughs> just like, hello. Uh, yeah, we're looking for John. Well, I'll tell you what. Bushman's in the basement. Also, I've got loads of crack on me. Once there, he discovered the ultimate hiding place, a lockable freezer. Uh-uh, I would proceed to climb inside and close the lids. Now he was safe. Although he had been clever enough to check that the freezer was not plugged in at the time, he was not clever enough to ascertain whether or not the lid could be unlocked from the inside. I would assume that it could be. Don't car boots have that emergency release thing? Because it, you, you, you have to have it in case people lock themselves in their boot or some stupid sh like that. Freezers, I feel like they should have that. Also, I feel like I could just like, you know, just get down like, get down like this. And then really like push myself up. Like, oh, I feel like with your legs and arms and like whole body, you could push that lid off. Sadly, it could not. To make matters worse, his hiding place was not as ingenious as he first thought. The police discovered him some three days later while visiting the house for a completely different reason. I'm not sure, but I suspect that reason may have had something to do with a suspicious smell, because after closing the lid, Bushman had quickly suffocated. Well, in that case, I don't think there'd be any smell at all. Would there, Dave? Like, unless I'm really missing something. He locks himself in a freezer. He suffocates. Ergo, freezer is airtight. Ergo, no smell escapes. Also, do you really start to smell after three days? I guess how, it depends on how warm it is, but you're in a basement. Yeah, I guess you could start to smell. Like, if you left a piece of chicken out just in the open for three days, that shit's gonna smell pretty quick. On balance, I feel he would probably have been better off with the police when they came knocking. After all, he wasn't black, so it's unlikely they would have shot him on sight, knelt on his neck until he died or anything like that. Dave, that got real serious real fast. Goddamn. He's out of line, but he's right. Leandro Matthias de Neves. I guess. I don't know if that's how his name's pronounced. It's... The, 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 I don't care. If you're even slightly familiar with the workings of a magnetic resonance imaging machine, I'm not. I mean, I know it takes, like, slices of x-rays, like, you sit in it, it X does a lot of x-rays, and then it stitches them all together into an MRI image. I guess that's what I know about those machines. And I wouldn't want to go inside one, it's quite scary. My dad had an MRI. He was getting, like, headaches. And the, the doctor was like, well, you better go for an MRI just to make sure. And he was like, yeah, it's quite unpleasant being just like slid inside a machine while it makes loud sounds and you can't move. 
I'm like, I never want that. More commonly referred to as an MRI machine, you will know that exceptionally powerful magnets are used. Even if you know nothing of these machines, the clue is kind of in the name. If you've been unfortunate enough to find yourself inside one of the machines, a process which is both exceptionally loud and tedious, you will be aware that before you go in, you'll be asked 50 or 60 times whether or not you have anything made of metal about your person. Please confirm to your knowledge that you are not a fully robotic being. We're born an organic creature and do in fact possess what many cultures would call a soul. Yeah, right? Because otherwise it's going to get ripped out your face or wherever it is real fast. I got a bar in here. Like, uh, it's titanium, though. So I think titanium's not magnetic. I wasn't sure whether it was titanium. I vaguely remember them telling me in the hospital it was titanium, but I didn't. I, I couldn't find out. And so I just got a big-ass magnet and stuck it on there and nothing happened. So hopefully I'll be fine if I ever need an MRI. Because also, like, it's one of those things where you might need an MRI because you've been in a horrible car accident or something, so they can't really be asking you whether or not you've got anything metal inside you. But hopefully they'd notice it. I mean, it's, it's pretty f obvious. That's disgusting. Our next candidate, a lawyer from Sao Paulo, either deliberately chose to lie about this, which is stupid, or failed to realize that the licensed firearm he was carrying was in fact made of metal, which would boost him way past stupid into the category of Floridian. So what exactly happened? Whilst attending an- that gun's gonna go the f off, my dude. <laughs> Whilst attending an MRI scan with his elderly mother, Denoveas failed to remove his pistol from the waistband of his trousers before entering the scanning room. Also, that's gonna- up the MRI machine. That is going to be real expensive. As soon as the machine was switched on, the magnets inside dragged the pistol from said waistband, and while trying to get a hold of it, Denovas accidentally shot himself in the stomach. Good news, he's in a hospital. <laughs> I get the video, it's not going to work out for him, though. After being rushed to a different hospital to receive treatment, he would eventually die several weeks later due to complications brought about by his injury. While all this is very sad, it does raise the question of just how dangerous this man's mother was. Presumably, he was so terrified of her that he elected to ignore all the warnings he was given and not reveal the presence of his firearm to staff members. According to the New York Post, following the accident, a spokesperson for Laboratorio Cura released a statement in which they'd claimed that they'd followed all accident prevention protocols, as was custom in all MRI units. Both the patient and his companion were properly instructed regarding the procedures for accessing the examination room and warned about the removal of any and all metallic objects. The facilities PR department added that both Noves and his mother signed a form regarding the protocols, but that the lawyer failed to mention his weapon and entered the unit with it by his own decision. Unbelievably, this is not the first time this has happened. <laughs> Guns in MRIs? Why? Because you touch yourself at night. Several years previously, a woman in America failed to leave her firearm outside when attending an MRI appointment, and due to the fact that she'd had it tucked into the back of her waistband, she required surgery to have a bullet removed from her buttock. How are you going in? Rectally. <laughs> If she had been carrying the weapon in her front pocket, then it's just possible that she too have made, been made the recipient of a Darwin Award. How about just, like, don't take guns to hospitals? <laughs> How about that? Like, as a blanket policy. Don't go to the hospital with a gun. Ah, unnamed Brit with dental pain. In the Brain Blaze episode titled Craziest Lengths People Went To For Revenge, it's a good title. I told you all about my former housemate Nick. Now, because it is relevant to the next entry, I shall tell you a quick story about he and I once drunkenly solved his toothache. Uh-oh, was it getting drunk? Because, like, I don't know, sometimes it's like, I, I sit in a chair all day, it's like a backache. So you go home, have a glass of wine, better than any barras at a ball. <laughs> Having spent his early life as a bare-knuckle boxer in London, Nick didn't exactly have a large amount of remaining teeth, and those that he did have were constantly giving him trouble. One night after we returned from the pub, where he had been attempting to reduce his toothache by consuming copious amounts of alcohol, he came up with a plan. After removing some fear, no, Dave, no, no. After removing some fishing line from his tackle box, what the f is he? What, what's going on? <laughs> Why has he got a tackle box on him? He threaded the one end around the offending tooth, looped the other end around my hand, and asked me to throw a punch in the opposite direction, which would hopefully remove the problem. Bro, just do the just tie it to a door handle and slam the door. Jesus Christ. I know this sounds like something that might happen in a cartoon, but it actually worked. The only problem was it was so effective that the tooth pinged off into the kitchen and disappeared. It turns out that it had landed in an open jar of dry pasta, and Nick found it in the back of his mouth several weeks later. I don't even know what to say. This is horrible. 
Possibly due to the insane amount of alcohol that Nick consumed on a daily basis, he suffered no ill effects from the open wound in his mouth. The same cannot be said for our unknown Darwin Award candidate. According to Dentistry.co.uk, a 52-year-old man recently ended up with sepsis, that's blood poisoning, after conducting some DIY dentistry. He's in England. Just go to the dentist. It's free. <laughs> I mean, for emergency stuff. If you want, like, fancy stuff, they're going to charge you, right? Unless you're a kid. Which is why, like, in the UK, getting your braces done as a teenager is really important. Because once you're 18, they ain't paying for that anymore. At least I think that's how it was when I was a kid. I did my dental work when I was an adult, for reasons. And it was very expensive. <laughs> And it would have been nice if it was free. Although the NHS, for Americans, the National Health Service, is a magical institution where you can go and have your ailments treated free of charge, eventually, <laughs> is in desperate need of reform, it is perhaps the area of the NHS dentistry uh, which is currently suffering the most. Not dissimilar to my late friend Nick. Wait, Nick's dead? <laughs> you just throw that out, just, he's late. <laughs> it's like I'm just laughing about ripping his teeth out. And now he's dead, Dave? What the f our protagonist had been suffering from extreme pain in one of his molars and try as he might, he'd been unable to secure an NHS dental appointment, so he decided to break out of the toolbox. Unfortunately, he was neither as lucky nor as creative as Nick when it came to DIY. If you've ever had a really bad toothache yourself, you know that you will do almost anything to make it go away. Uh, there's no wood to touch. Needle, needle, needle. But I've never had a toothache. I've never had anything, like badly wrong with my teeth i said before i had dental work the the bottom ones would push together a little bit which was you know sometimes a little bit painful and only now do i think that i've not experienced that pain in years great job which is nice i just completely forgot about that being something that was in my life i mean you take an ibuprofen or a paracetamol or a glass of wine it would go away but huh that's fantastic in this case almost anything involved forcibly extracting the truth <laughs> Forcibly extracting the truth. Forcibly extracting the truth. Extracting the truth. With a pair of pliers. Not, did I say forcibly extracting the truth with a pair of pliers? This isn't Guantanamo Bay. This is a dentist's office. Not just any pliers, though. This guy used a pair of rusty pliers. No, 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 no. Oh! Bro, have you not heard of tetanus? Have you not heard of disease? <laughs> He's like, doesn't smell bad, let's use it. He's subscribing to the miasma theory of disease. No, this guy used a rusty pair of pliers. Although he experienced temporary relief after the extraction, he quickly became very unwell. And after being admitted to hospital, it was discovered that he had late-stage sepsis. Sadly, his blood poisoning was so serious that he would die several weeks later. God damn. Who would have thought that introducing rusty particles into your bloodstream could have had such a detrimental effect on your health? I'm going to give you a rusty venture. I feel like this is the sort of thing I don't I don't I don't blame him that much. I don't think it's that crazy. Like it's the sort of thing I do. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, it'll be fine. My body will take care of it. Although I'd never be yanking out my tooth, but I might use a rusty pair of pliers on myself. For, uh, I don't know, cutting off my fingers, whatever. What? Um, and I wouldn't really think about it because I'd be like, yeah, my body's pretty strong. It'll handle that. Shit. Um, I guess I'm mistaken. No more rusty pliers for home operations, Simon. Inessa Palenko. Social media really has the ability to bring out the worst in people. As soon as you place a screen and keyboard between the people with whom you are interacting, some sort of transformation seems to take place. Often, merely clicking on their social media platform of choice can instantly imbue users with previously unrecognized talents. Examples include, but are not limited to, suddenly becoming an expert in the field of politics or medicine, knowing exactly what the best course of action might be in any relationship trouble, or suddenly believing yourself to be Rambo when you are, in fact, a weak nerdy kid living in your mother's basement. While all of these social media-induced transformations are annoying and potentially dangerous, they do pale in comparison to the most popular content trend, doing absolutely anything on camera just to get people to look at you for a few seconds. It was this thirst for clicks which led to the death of Inessa Palenko. So, what happened? Well, Palenko, a Russian beautician who had a fairly substantial Instagram following, decided that she had had enough of life under a tyrannical dictator and needed a holiday. As part of that holiday, she visited the panoramic Gagri viewing point in Abkhazia. Asia. All right then, described as a breakaway region of Georgia. As she stood on the clifftop taking in the breathtaking view, we can only assume that the following thought or something similar occurred to her. What would happen if she one day suffered from some sort of cleanser-induced amnesia and couldn't remember this trip? How would she prove to her friends back home that she'd actually been on the holiday? <laughs> 
<laughs> she's gonna do something really risky to get a good Instagram shot, and she's gonna die. Dude, there was a video the other I saw the other day. Someone was in, like, Dubai or something like hanging off a skyscraper that was still being constructed like a beauty influencer with no support she was just holding some dude's hand and they're like what the f man it's just it's it's not worth it and it was real i looked into it because i didn't believe it and i thought media's misrepresenting this and i everything i looked into was like nah that shit happened kind of wild had a life experience actually happens to you if you don't share it on instagram well fortunately there was a very easy solution to these concerns she could just take a selfie as everybody knows though a picture of you standing quite near the edge of a cliff with a safety bra behind you isn't interesting at all that's not gonna get those clicks so how could she make it more exciting after a moment's thought and presumably no more than that she decided that the picture would be far better all round if she climbed over the safety rail and stood right on the edge sadly the only scaling experience she appeared to have involved prices scaling prices while my missing <laughs> and when she came down on the other side of the safety rail she stumbled off and fell off the edge after falling 170 feet that's 51.8 meters onto the beach below she was rushed to hospital but would die later that day she didn't die immediately 52 meters is a massive fall unbelievably according to an article i read an investigation was launched into just exactly how this had happened and to find out who was at fault now i don't wish to presume especially as the results of this investigation have not yet been published but i think if we go to pretty good idea tragic as this story is the only person who is at fault would be polanco she got caught up in the moment wanted people to look at her photo and wax poetic about how cool she was and deliberately climbed over a safety rail i mean yeah instagram's like kind of broken everything but i i don't i i mean this is more sad than it is like ha ha it's just like that someone that that person's dead because they just wanted a photo i don't know if that i don't think that's funny I don't know the guy with the gun in the mri i'm like ah <laughs> but somehow that's okay but this is less okay to me if anybody else gets in trouble over this i shall be seriously annoyed you may be interested to hear that taking a selfie is statistically very dangerous indeed according to google between january 2018 and july 2021 an estimated 379 people have died due to selfie related incidents to put that in perspective over the same time period about 200 people were killed by sharks that's right you're statistically more likely to kill yourself while taking a selfie than you are to be eaten by a shark however if you somehow manage to film yourself being eaten by a shark you'd probably get more views than a pretty clifftop selfie on instagram now that would have been the end of today's episode were it not for a conversation i had last night with my dad when i told him what i was currently working on he reminded me of a story that happened to one of his colleagues when i was only a child was this la was this this year dave because it sounds like you're going further into the past and you th this video would just be clickbait dave that would be terrible terry for that was his colleague's name was an interesting fellow i have fond memories of him teaching me how to use equipment that was far too dangerous for a five-year-old to touch let alone use one morning when terry woke up he went through his usual routine of lighting a cigarette and taking it with him to the bathroom for his morning routine unfortunately for terry his wife had poured several different cleansing chemicals into the toilet and when he added his lit cigarette to the mix it caused a fairly impressive amount of flames to issue from the pan among other oh yeah toilet pan i forgot they're called pans among the things that got caught up in these flames were terry's genitals but wait it gets worse oh god when his wife found him howling in pain on the bathroom floor she quickly summoned an ambulance ambulances came quickly back then when the paramedics arrived they loaded terry onto a stretcher and as they began to carry him to the ambulance they asked him just how he had sustained these serious burns in a bathroom terry not being the kind of person to pass up a funny story told them exactly what had happened in retrospect he probably would have been better off waiting until he was safely inside the ambulance because as he finished his story one of the paramedics laughed so hard that he dropped the end of the stretcher that was carrying him causing terry to fall down the stairs and break his leg <laughs> bro no way as far as i'm aware and granted i never checked terry never did regain the use of his testicles <laughs> which i believe qualifies him for the most rare of things a non-posthumous darwin award Ooh, really that must have been a hell of a because he took his balls off <laughs> terry i'm so sorry mate Woo -wee. i don't know why that's horrible and that's the end of the episode could have a baby if only I had a penis.